Hello, Serge here, coming to you from the back tee at the PGA Golf Learning Center in Port St. Lucie, Florida. And we have one of our students here, Linda, who came to the school here. Now, in all the schools we've done, Linda is only the second lady that has shown up at a school. Our first lady came with her husband, but Linda came by herself. And uh, I don't know if we might call that brave or whatever, but she's here, the only lady in the school by herself, and she doesn't have her husband. But it's been a great experience. Linda is extraordinarily an avid golfer. She puts a lot, of, a lot of thought and effort into her golf game. She's retired, so she's got, she can play a lot of golf, and she wants to play it well. And she came to the school to get it, you know, first-hand experience with, with me. And so today, when we were doing the prescription part of her diagnosis, which we did uh, yesterday, this morning she said something to me when we started, and it just blew me away, and I felt it was something you all had to hear. So, Linda... You started saying that last night you had a big experience when you went to bed. And what was that? On the course yesterday, when he was teaching me to take away the club, I was closing my face. He was trying to get me to toe up. I couldn't quite digest it and actually perform it. But I went back to my room last night and I started visualizing it, thinking about it, thinking about it. And then when I went to bed, I actually visualized doing my practice swings, and then I visualized myself actually playing holes of golf until I fell asleep. So I woke up this morning, and it was a whole different uh, mindset. He took, takes me to the course, and the first time that we try to get the toe up in the backswing, it worked just like that. And visualization is the only way that I can digest this, and it, it works very well for me. So did, visualization did it. It started with thinking, but even preceding the thinking was the fact that we spent time and we, you, I explained exactly what had to happen and how we made it happen and why it had to happen. All right? And that's the key. So first, you have to have mental knowledge because it's the mind that triggers the muscles. And then she went, Linda went to work and then put her mind with that knowledge to how is her body going to make that movement because the mind triggers the muscles in how you have to move. Right. And so she did it before she went to sleep, and then when she started to, went to bed, she laid down, and she started pay, taking practice swings in her, in her mind and, and then played some golf holes doing it. So she took it to the full extent. Now, I did a video a while back where I, where I talked about we have to take words and, 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 and change them into muscle, in, into muscle movement. And the brain moves the muscles. There's no muscle memory here. The brain, the muscles don't have a brain. The brain, the muscles only respond to the signals the brain gives them. So it all starts in the brain. And it starts by thinking about it. Now, the other point I want to make here is exactly what Linda said. She practiced it in her mind. I mean, most people believe the only way you can get better is you've got to be holding a golf club, standing on a range, beating balls, sweating bullets, and getting blisters. You don't. You can practice in your office, think, sit back a minute and, and, and just close your eyes and think and sense the feel of your swing. You can practice it in your, sitting down in your chair. You can, you can practice, you know, going to bed. I mean, I bet you it was a heck of a lot better than counting sheep, I guess, huh? I, I don't know which hole I fell asleep on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you, but you fell asleep with good thoughts and, and I don't know, I guess I'll have to ask Dr. Rankin, our psychologist, uh, you might have been hitting balls in your sleep. I might have. Which, which, which could could reinforce it. Yeah. Like I know that back when I was was a, was playing amateur golf and college golf, and then when I turned pro, when I was traveling, I'd be hitting balls in my mind while I was driving. I can remember when I was working my way through college, and, and you know, I'd be at work, and I'm, I was doing a job that took some attention as to what I was doing because I didn't want to hurt myself. Sometimes I worked with some, you know, scissors and and sharp objects and things that could hurt me and cut my fingers off. But I was hitting balls while I while I in my mind while I was doing my job, which so there was some attention to my job and some attention to golf, and I'm hitting balls and the time flies and the first thing you know the bell rings and it's time to go home. So we, we only, we, I'd like to really use this to dispel, and here's living proof of it from somebody other than me, that, that if you think about it, and it doesn't really matter where you think about it or when, and I got a feeling that maybe there's an outside chance bet is a great shot because that round might continue while you're still sleeping. And, and I think that's big. And so, how long have you been doing this about thinking about the golf swing? Years, years. I, and I find that when I wake up in the morning, somehow the brain acclimates to what I was trying to, to teach myself, and I, I'm 
more apt to be able to, to actually physically perform it. So, but you don't know what you shot last night. No, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> don't know if you played nine or eighteen. No. But you, I guarantee you played some holes. I did. And and it might have even been 36. Who knows? <laughs> but it's obviously it registers. And the brain is the brains. They show that there's quiet times at sleep, and then there's active times. But either way, she was active until she went to sleep, and that 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 sunk in. And that's off. That's that's great. So the message today is, you don't only have to think about golf and your golf swing. You set up and you swing when you got a club in your hands and you're standing on the range or out on the golf course. We hitting balls. Remember. You don't have to be beating balls, sweating bullets, and getting blisters. You can think about it anywhere, anytime, any place. Think about it, sense it, feel it. And with all of those things, you're going to find that your swing will start improving because you're building the mental memory, which will then trigger the muscles properly. Well, from Linda and Dawn, from the back tee at the PGA Golf Learning Center, I'll be talking to you all again soon.